A warm welcome to VTU e Shikshana program, e-learning center. In this video, we are going to see about module 5 of artificial neural network towards the self-organizing feature map. As we are aware about that, towards the self-organizing feature map self-organization. A self-organization map is a type of artificial neural network which is also inspired by biological models of a neural network system. From 1970, it was a biological models of neural system. It follows an unsupervised learning approach and trained it networks through a competitive learning algorithm. So let me discuss about this self-organizing feature map with a self-organization towards the module number 5 of artificial neural network. Towards self-organizing feature map, a self-organizing feature map which is going to be shortly called as SOFM is an unsupervised machine learning technique need to produce a low dimensional, typically a two dimensional representations of an higher dimensional data set while preserving the topological structure of the data. So the self-organizing map is a type of artificial neural network, but it is trained using competitive learning rather than error coding or error correction learning. Example, a back a propagation with gradient descents, so which is used by an other artificial neural networks. So the self-organized maps was introduced by Finnish professor Cohen in 1980s and therefore is sometimes called as Cohen map or Cohen network. For example, a data set with variable measured in observations could be represented as a cluster of observations with similar values of the variables. So this clusters then could be visualized as a two dimensional map such as or such that the observations in the proximal clusters having more similar value than the observations in the distal clusters. So this can make an I definitional data easier to visualize and analyze. Let me see about some of the properties of stochastic data. Often in real world applications, input compromises a stream of stochastic vectors that are drawn from a stationary or non-stationary probabilistic distributions. In the process of analyzing the behavioral response of man-made system to such a stream of inputs, characterization of these properties of the input stream becomes more important. Sometimes uh, this quantity of interest which is going to be uh, might be a simple average of input stream which is going to be a simple average of input streams. Alternatively, the correlation matrix of this input vector uh, stream, the input vector stream assumes an importance in such a characterization process. So that it is going to be correlation matrix of the input vector stream also going to be present. So this is the properties of stochastic data. So let me continue with this properties of the stochastic data a stream of stochastic data vectors. When we talk of a stream of stochastic vector, the problem is that in order to calculate the statistical quantities, in order to calculate the statistical quantities of interest, we need to have complete information about the population. This is in general not possible since the vector stream is usually drawn through a real-time sampling process and is unknown environment. Okay, In an unknown environment, a real-time sampling process or real-time data collection is not so possible. So that we are going to say that generally it is not possible since the vector stream is going to be usually drawn through the real-time sample but it is going to be a problem in an unknown environment. Therefore, one has to make, to do this estimates which should be computed quickly 
and which should accurate in the sense that they coverage to the correct value in the long run. So that we need to make the estimation okay, so that it can be a correct value in the long run. So that we are going to move on to the self organization. So our study uh, our present study which is going to focus on the design of self organizing neural network. So that are the capable of extracting the useful information from the environment within which they operate. So that we are going to take the self organization. So the primary focus on this design of the self organization lies in the discovery of significant patterns or invariant of the environments without the intervention of teaching inputs. So an input aspect of this implementation of such a network is that all adoption must be based on information that is available locally to the synapse from the pre and post synaptic neuron signals and its activations. So that we are going to take the primary purpose of the self organization is nothing but the discovery of significant patterns or the invariance of the particular network without the intervention of teaching inputs, without intervention of the teaching inputs. And one more, an important aspect of this implementation of such network is that an adoption, the adoption must be based on the information that is available locally, information available locally to the synapses from the pre and post cinematic neuron signals and its activations. Okay. So that what happened? The self organization must lead eventually, is going to lead eventually to a state of knowledge that provides useful information concerning the network from which patterns are going to be get drawn. Okay. So, the learning loss for the self organization system which are designed to work from local information retain the biological fidelity to a much larger extent than they employed for the supervised learning. Okay. So for example, in the ARTI system, the patterns which is going to be a class invariant eventually emerge after the learning process which completes and each pattern in the training set data leads to a resonant in some F2 node. So that what happened, we also we are going to saw that the distinguished aspects of this behavior of this neuron layers was that there are there was a competitive or cooperative process underlying the evaluation of the principles which is going to be get present over there. Okay. So this evaluation activations of the neurons are going to be get playing a role. Further, the general process of this operation was two stage. First an activity pattern stabilized ill bot layer F1 and F2 after the search cycle completed and then in star and out star synapse downloaded information. So the fast changing STM stabilization precedes the slow changing LTM learning process. So we are going to see about the principles of self organization. How the principles of self organizations are going to be get present? As pointed out in self organizing system, there are based on the following three principles it is going to get work. Adoption in synapses is self reinforcing. LTM dynamics are based on competitions. LTM dynamics involve cooperation as well. So we will investigate a number of self organizing neural network algorithms that are useful for the extraction of statistical properties or subtract of data points drawn from an unknown environment. So the network we study are essentially competitive learning system. So our study of this algorithm will also takes us through the terrain of clustering algorithms. So the self 
organizing feature map algorithm and finally the growing neural gas algorithm are going to be involved in the further classes. We will see about Hebbian learning. What is Hebbian learning? It is going to be called as Hebbian uh, learning revisited. It is a max maximal EGN vector filtering Hebbian learning. As we know that the signal Heb loss formed the basis for outer product correlation encoding in bidirectional associative memories. So, we are going to have the value which incorporates both exponential forgetting of the past information and asymptotic encoding of this product of the signals. So, the change in the weights is dictated by the product of signals of the pre and post neurons, post cinematic neurons. So, that the value, the weights are going to be dealt in such a way. This Hebbian learning incorporates both exponential for gutting of past information and asymptotic encoding of the product of the particular present signal which is going to be deals with this. This is going to be outer product data which are past information and this is going to be a product of signal. In other words, as we can say that the change in the weight is going to be dictated by the product of signal of the pre and post cinematic neuron. So, this algorithm which uses local informations. So, why is Hebbian learning useful? How it is going to be get useful for us? We now apply the Hebbian learning in the context of linear neuron and show how such a simple system can extract the dominant EGN directions of the correlation matrix of input vector string, which compromises the patterns drawn from an unknown probability, unknown, uh, probability distribution. So, a single linear unit which using a Hebbian learning can extract the dominant EGN directions of the correlation matrix of a input data or input vector scheme that compromises or comprises the patterns drawn from some unknown probabilis probability distribution. Such a way this Hebbian learning is going to be useful for us to do the understanding in a clear way. Let me see about the linear neuron and discrete time formalization. This consider this linear neuron, this activation y and the signal s are computed in the usual way. As we are going to see about that the x and the y is going to be computed as in the sequence both are going to be in a same thing. But it is going to be a linear neuron and it is going to be a discrete time formalization. That is the difference which is going to get present over there. By using this one, we are going to get the activations and signal computations. So, this activation is going to be dealt as S k, where x is equal to x1 to xn transfers and w is equal to w1 to wn transfers. Here, the input vector x is assumed to be a drawn from a stationary stochastic distribution for a linear neuron. So, the learning law of reduced to the value which is going to be dealt as w i. So, this might be seen unrealistic since distribution in the real world might not actually being stationary, but it also makes analysis traceable. So, in the discrete time, if you are going to see about that, we can assume the sample as I said, x is equal to x 1 to the power of k to x n to the power of k transfers is input to the neuron with the weights w is equal to w1 to the power of k to wn to the power of k of transfers which indexed by the iteration index k. So, the signal computation can be written as sk is equal to yk that is equal to summation of i to 1 wi to k and xik is equal to xk transfers to wk. So, for the linear neuron, the product 
of the signal in the above is essentially the product of the input signal and the neuron activations. So, the simple discrete time weight update the rule that employs the Hebbian learning is then w i to the power of k plus 1 is equal to w i to the power of k plus alpha x j to the power of k into s k which is going to be taken into that this is going to be a continuous value and this is going to be discrete value. It is a continuous and that is going to be discrete. So, with the help of this we are going to study about the vector form of this Hebbian learning. The Hebbian learning is going to be in the simplest Hebbian learning is going to be used to go for the vector form. So, in this present and this particular thing we will use the symbol alpha, the symbol alpha for the learning rate to avoid the conflict with the symbol epsilon which we can use to denote the EGN vectors. Okay. So, which can be rewritten in the vector form as w k plus 1 is equal to w k plus alpha s k into x k and we are going to deal about this particular thing. So, one can interrupt or interpret one can interpret the HEPS learning scheme of as adding the impinging input vector to the weight vector in direct proportions to the similarity between these two. So, that what happened? the signal s k or the activation y k since the signal of this linear neuron is going to be simply its activations. So, as we have replaced this alpha k to alpha y of k which makes the equation revert to the standard error correlation learning which is going to be a correlation learning form and which encountered in the supervised learning case but not with a dynamic activation depends a learning rate or dependent learning rate. So, this learning rate depends on the linear product of x k and w k which is the activation, but the activation measures, uh, measures the similarities and so the input which are more similar to the weight vector which is going to get larger learning rates. So, we have to go for some of the essential uh, points to be get discussed over here. For any given weight vector, the effective learning rate depends upon the pattern being presented and the learning law is essentially perturbing the weight vector in the direction of x k by an amount of proportional to that of the signal s k or the activation of y k. Since the signal of the linear neuron is going to be simply its activation, simply its activation. So, one can interpret the HEP learning scheme as adding the input vector to the weight vector in direct proportion to the similarity between the two. So, further frequently occurring inputs will exercise a greater influence during this learning. This is so because such vector will tend to bias the weight vector, bias the weight vector increasingly towards themselves and on subsequent presentations will thus greater larger signal values. So, which will lead to even larger weight updates in those directions. So, the neuron weight gradually biases itself towards the direction in the input space that has frequently occurring patterns. This dominant direction is that of the EGN vector corresponding to the largest EGN value of the correlating matrix of the input vector stream. Here two points are worth enough. Uh, first a major problem is that the magnitude of the weight vector grows without bound. Second since patterns continuously uh, uh, perturbed the system the equilibrium conditions of this learning has to be identified by the weight vector remaining with a neighborhood of an equilibrium weight vector w on a average method. So, this process is going to be a self reinforcing frequently occurring the pattern perturb the weight vector in their own direction to a greater extent than other patterns. 
so that this increases the signal value of those patterns which in turn increases the proportions by which the weight learn the patterns on subsequent iterations. Let me see some algebraic sums for this particular data. So as I mentioned about the point worth nothing, a major problem arises with the magnitude of this weight vector. It grows without bounds and patterns continuously perturbed the system and equilibrium conditions of this learning is going to be identified by the weight vector remaining within a neighborhood of an equilibrium weight vector. And this weight vector actually performs a Brownian motion about this so called equilibrium weight vector, equilibrium weight vector. Let me see about some algebraic, this algebraic things. We start by recognizing the weight update equations. So, Wk plus 1 is equal to Wk plus the alpha matrix, alpha value which have been given over there, which is going to deal about this particular expression as Wk plus 1 minus Wk is equal to alpha xk, xk transfers with the weight matrix Wk, which yields the value as like this. By taking the expectation of both sides conditionals on WK, we have E of EW, E of KW plus 1 minus WK is equal to E of del WK and which is can be finally we can get the value as alpha R WK where we have assumed that WK is independent of XK. So, we hold it fixed while computing the expectations. With the help of this, we are going to study about the equilibrium condition. Let W dash denotes the equilibrium weight vector. This is the vector towards the neighborhood of which weight vector converge after sufficient iteration elapse. In other words, the weight vector converges towards a neighborhood of this equilibrium weight vector and its trajectory remains confined to a neighborhood of W. In the equilibrium condition, weight changes must average to 0. So, with this definitions and using the expression of the previous, we can rewrite this as E of del WK is equal to 0 is equal to alpha R W dash. So, that we are going to get this R W dash is equal to 0, so that it is going to be a lambda null of W dash, which shows that the W dash is an Eigen vector of R corresponding to the uh, degenerative Eigen value, which is going to be called as lambda null is equal to 0. This equilibrium weight vector lies in the kernel of R, since R is a positive semi definite. So, of its EGN value say P of uh, uh, lambda of them, it will be 0 and others can be a positive data. Such a way it is going to be get derived. Let me see about the EGN decomposition of the weight vector. In generally, any weight vector can be expressed in terms of EGN vectors or EGN values. So, that we are going to take that one w is equal to summation of i to 1 to m. We are going to take the beta i of n i plus w is equal to null. So, we are going to get this expression where the weight matrix null is the component of weight matrix in the null space, null subspace. So, the epsilon values are going to be EGN vectors correspond to a non zero and zero. So, the dash values are going to be taken into dash is going to be a non zero and this is going to be zero. Respectively, with the help of B, a beta i and gamma i, y i being the respectively component of this W matrix or weight matrix in those directions. So, we will make use of this decomposition in a moment and we are going to calculate the average weight value. Coming to this average weight. Perturbations, considering a small 
amount of this equilibrium. So what happened? This equation, a small amount of equilibrium condition is going to be observed and which is going to be get useful for us to define the value as E of del W k is equal to alpha r sub k. So which is going to get the ith EGN value as well as the kernel terms goes to 0 from this direction. By substituting this we are going to get that one. So where the lambda i denotes that the ith EGN value, the lambda i denotes the ith EGN value and the second term goes to 0 since the kernel terms becomes 0. So that null value becomes 0. So being in the kernel lambda null is equal to 0 being in the kernel of R this kernel term becomes 0 this value will become 0. Hence we are going to get the value as like that. Next we will move on to searching the maximal EGN direction. Maximum EGN direction. So as we have seen the previous equation clearly shows that with a small perturbations the weight changes occur in directions away from that of W words or weight towards EGN vector corresponding to non-zero EGN value. Therefore, the weight matrix represents an unstable equilibrium. So, the dominant directions of moment is the one corresponding to the largest EGN value and this component grows in time so that the weight vector matrix will therefore grow indefinitely and its direction approaches the EGN, EGN vector corresponding to the largest EGN value. So, a direction is referred to as the maximal EGN direction or a maximal EGN direction. Okay. So, it is observed that although the directionality of this final weight vector is useful, its unbounded magnitude can be create a problem. So, that a dominant direction of this moment is the one corresponding to the largest EGN value and thus component must therefore grow in time and meanwhile the weight vector magnitude w also grows indefinitely. So the direction approach the EGN vector corresponding to the largest EGN value. Hence we are going to take that E of del wk is equal to alpha summation i to 1 to m beta i lambda i and epsilon i which is going to be a small perturbations causes weight changes to occur in the direction away from that of the towards EGN vector corresponding to non-zero EGN values. Such a way it is going to be get dealt over there. Understand? So, with the help we are going to move on to the next topic called as Oja's rule. Oja, the problem of weight vector magnitude growing without bounds can be solved in the straightforward fashion by making the following modifications to the simple Hebin weight change procedure. So, the Wk plus 1 is equal to Wk plus alpha Sk of Xk minus Sk Wk is equal to, we are going to replace this term with an Xk dash. So, it can be recast into a different form to clearly see the notations or the normalization expression as wi to the power of k plus 1 is equal to such a way. Where if you can see about this expression xk dash is equal to xk minus sk wk. So, this rule is called hoja rule. This rule the replacement of this is going to be called as oja yes hoja's rule the replacement of this. This is nothing but xk dash. It is going to be called as Oja's rule. It adds a weight dk proportional to xk square to the simple Hebin learning law of equation. Notice that the term alpha sk, SK into xk dash still retain the Hebin learning form. Expect that 
which is going to provide the value and except that instead of working with xt we work with the difference between xk and the signal scale weight vector wk so that the above equation can be recast into a different form to clearly see the normalization with the help of this expression so this learning equation essentially states that the new weights computed from the standard hep procedure are normalized by the magnitude of the regular hep update weight vector so a little algorithm shows or little algebra shows that this equation is going to be approximated by hoja rule for small learning rate alpha so we can recompute we can recompute the average weight changes once again it is to be observed that in equilibrium condition the weight changes should average to zero so first we compute the expected weight change conditional on this wk by using the above equation and we are going to move on to the next one so computing the expected weight change condition on wk is going to determine this expression by setting e of wk to zero which yields the equilibrium weight vector w dash so we are going to get this expression is going to be dealt as like this and from that we can define that the lambda value can be rewritten and it can provide a expression for this and which shows that this value is going to be a self normalizing a small vector value which is going to be get present the weight vector a little algebraic shows this equation is going to be approximated by hoja rule so in other words the equilibrium weight vector magnitude approaches unity as learning procedures which is going to be get proceed over here this algorithm thus has a self normalizing property by design such a way it's going to provide the self normalization value in this particular parameter let me move on to the maximal egn vector direction which is the only stable direction which is going to be get present over here a normalized egn vector of r satisfies the equilibrium conditions however only one direction corresponding to the maximal egn vector is going to be stable so conducting a small neighborhood analysis before that we are going to see about that a w is equal to epsilon i plus c where the symbol denotes the small perturbation applied to this particular value and substitute this above in the equation which heals the value as n i so here it shows that the perturbation components along with this must grow along with this particular lambda i is greater than lambda j with the help of that we are going to study about the operational summary for the simulation of oja rule the equilibrium vector of oja rule performs a random walk around the maximal egn vector the hoja algorithm is going to be summarized in the operational form as shown in this slide the given a set of feature vectors x is equal to x i drawn from a stationary stochastic distribution p of x we are going to initialize the weight vector w is going to be a set of rn of linear neuron to some small random number here no bias is going to be required over there and learning rate alpha to a small value say 0.05 to 0.1 and averaging the weight changes to tolerance level then we are going to have the iteration the iteration picks an xa xk value with a uniform probability over x and it's going to compute the neuron signal sk is equal to yk is equal to xk transverse wk 
and it is going to update the weights w k plus 1 is equal to w k plus the value which is going to be del less s k x k minus s w k. So, which is going to be get repeat until the average weight changes which is going to be deals about the expression of this. So, this is going to be a summarization of this particular simulation. So, as we are aware about that any normalized EGN value of R satisfies the equilibrium conditions. So, that the only direction corresponds to the nominal or a maximal vector is going to be stable as we have come across over there. So, while recomputing this average weight changes which is going to be providing that uh, equilibrium condition that weight changes should be equal to 0. So, the Hoja rule problem which has a weight vector magnitude growing without bounds can be solved with the help of the straight forward fashion by making these modifications of this heaven weight change procedure. So, as we aware about that this EGN decomposition of this weight vector which is going to be expressive in a terminology EGN vector W value. So, that the W null is going to be a component of W in the null space. Such a way this equilibrium condition denotes the vector value and this is the vector towards the neighborhood of which weight converge after sufficient iterations elapses. So, in other words we can say that the weight vector convergent towards a neighborhood of the equilibrium weight vector and it uh, trajectory remains confined to a neighborhood of this particular weight matrix. So, that the equilibrium condition weight changes must average to 0 is not it or not we have come across already in that one. So, as we already we come across with some of the essential points I recall again over there for any given weight vector the effective learning rate depends upon the pattern being presented. Then the learning law is going to be essentially predicting the weight vector in the direction and an amount of proportional to the signal is not it or not. So, that one can interpret the head learning scheme as an adding the input vector to the weight vector in the direction proportion to that of the similar between the two. As we come across in the such a same way same similarity uh, we have applied the Hebbian, Hebbian uh, learning in the context of this linear neuron and we have been sub summarized this particular uh, simulation of Hoja rule. So, that it is going to give a present uh, a frequent occurring inputs will exercise a greater influence during the learning. Such a way it is going to uh, provide such vector will tend to bias the weight vector increasingly towards themselves as on subsequent presentations which will generate a large value which will lead to even large weight updates in this directions. So, the neuron weight gradually biases itself towards the difference in the input space that has frequently occurring the pattern. So, this dominant directions matrix of this input vector streams as we are aware about that it is going to have a first a major problem in that magnitude of weight vector which grows without bounds and the second since the pattern continuously uh, predicts the system the equilibrium condition of a learning has to be identified by the weight vector remains within a neighborhood of the equilibrium weight vector on an average. So, that this process of self reinforcing makes the Hoja rule to be get stronger. So, that the frequently occurring patterns predict the weight vector in their own directions in their own directions to a greater extent than other patterns. So, this increases the signal value on the own on those patterns which in turn increases the proportion by which the weight learn the patterns on the subsequent iterations. Okay. Such a way it is going to be get provide the average value and the search values or the maximal EGN value. So, the maximum EGN value the weight 
changes occurs in the direction away from the top the uh, weight towards the EGN vector corresponding to a non-zero uh, EGN value. Therefore, the weight represents an unstable equilibrium. So, the dominant directions of the movement in the one correspondence to the largest EGN value and thus the component grows in time. So, the weight vector magnitude will therefore grow indefinitely and its direction approaches the EGN vector corresponding to the latest or largest EGN value and a direction referred to as a maximal EGN vector direction. Okay, na? So, that such a way this problem of weight vector magnitude growing without bounds can be solved in the straightforward fashion by making the modifications with a simple heaven weight change procedure. So, that we noticed that the changes have been observed and it is going to be get providing a learning equation essentially states that the new weights computed from the standard HEP procedure which are going to be get normalized by magnitude of the regular HEP update weight vectors. So, by recomputing the average weight changes and maximal EGN uh, directions for the stable directions, we have been computed this equilibrium weight vector hoja rule which performed the particular iterations of pick and XA with a uniform probability and computing the neuron signal and update weights for until it gets the average value which is going to be get computed over there. So, I am going to wind up this video over here remaining we will continue in the next session. Thank you.